All right, guys, today we are working on a 2009 Land Rover LR3 ECM. It's a Denso MB279700-9254. Uh, you can see it there on the tag of both of the ECMs. We're doing a one-to-one -one clone. Uh, this is an old ECM here. Um, customer says it's non-working. Um, car just cranks, won't fire. They've traced it down to this being the issue and this is the replacement here. We're gonna be using OBD Star to do the clone today. So we got a power supply over here. Um, we're gonna need the 12 volt power supply to do this. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into here. Accept. ECU flasher. ECM. Enter. Go to brand. Rover, and we're looking for a Denso ECM. It is right here. Um, and to figure out which one it was, I pulled these out of the case, and this is the the chip here. It actually has that number right here, right on the chip. Six four seven or six four F seven zero five. Eight. So we click that. Start. We're going to need the, to do this on the bench, we're going to need the P004 adapter. All right here's our adapter here with the ignition switch. Okay. Okay. Out. This is our pin out that we're gonna need. Got uh, two positives, a ground and a can low and can high. As you can see, we got it uh, hooked up there. On this, be sure right here, can high six, and can can low fourteen. Um, in this harness here, there's different ones. Like right here is a. Uh, a can high, if you can see it here, can high three. So make sure you're using the right uh, can lines on this, guys. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So once you have uh, your pin out, you can go, go back. You can also go to the guide here. Gives you a little little walkthrough of everything that you uh, you might need. It tells you uh, how to hook the, or what uh, adapter you're going to need to do it. I'm going to need the, the 12 volts hooked up to the, the tablet or actually uh, go back to this real quick. There's actually a, a 12 volt on this right here and that's what we're going to be using. Actually, I think it's like right there uh, instead of having it plugged into the tablet. So then you're going to hit connect. We have to turn on the ECM. You might want to turn that on. Connect. All right, so we got a, an air. So I'm going to grab the multimeter and do a couple tests. Usually, when you don't have power, the this light right underneath this, there's like a little car. When it's thinking, that comes up. And when you don't have that, usually your pinout's wrong or you're not getting power to the ECM. 
So I'm gonna bust out the the good ECM and I'm gonna hook that up, see what we got from there, and then get the uh, ohm meter out or voltmeter out and uh, see what I can find. We'll be right back. All right, guys. I think I found a a way to make this work for us. Uh, I hooked up the other ECM and I grounded out my lead and I just started checking for power on uh, different components that I know should have power. And when I got to these here, the center one should be about five volts. Um, and we got the meters not even going over to the volts. It's actually doing ohms on it each one of those when I test it. Um, on the good one, it's got five volts there. So what I'm gonna try to do is I've set the, set the <clears throat> power supply to five volts. I'm gonna take this little lead here that I got right here, and I'm gonna touch it right on that center one and we're gonna see if it'll read. So let me set the camera up and we'll be right back. Okay guys, I'm about to touch this lead on there and I'm going to hit connect and see if we can get this thing to read the old ECM or connect to it. Watch right here, uh, another light will come up underneath this. If it is connecting to the ECM, and it's actually thinking or, or reading. So, touching on there, connect. There we go. Let's read the EEPROM. Reading the EEPROM successful. Okay, okay, saved that. Let's read the internal flash. There goes the internal flash. As you can see, see when it's actually connected and, and reading or it's got data coming in, that little car will start to blink or light up. Um, I've noticed with this tool, anytime I don't get that little car coming up, it's usually I have the pinout on wrong and it doesn't have power or something is dead or shorted out in the ECM and that's why it's uh, it's not coming up. All right, save that. Okay, disconnect. Yes. All right, now I'm gonna hook the clone up here and we're gonna attempt to write the EEPROM and the internal flash. Okay guys, I just wanted to show you this quick. This is the, the good ECM, the clone, and I wanted to show you what I tested on this to see that we needed five volts uh, on this to get it to work. So I, I have this on the ground on my board. I have power on. Right here I have the, the 12 volt ignition on, power plugged in. And I just came over here and started testing. Watch when I touch the center prong. See that, see how I get five volts there, five volts there, and five volts on that one. Uh, that one's four, but it should be, uh, I can't get a good, yeah, it's right around four volts. Um, all it took was us putting five volts to that, uh, to that back one. And it, uh, was enough to get that thing to read. So if you ever have issues where this little light on here is not coming up. It's uh, it's a good idea to go in and 
and test with the multimeter and, and see if you can find, you know, where you're losing power or it, it could even be ground. Um, a lot of times when you're looking at the board with a magnifying glass, you might see something, uh, some type of little component that's burnt. Um, and a lot of times if it's like a, something like that, you can put five volts and, and basically backfeed the system. Uh, from the opposite side of of where it should be uh, taken power from, which would be this side. So we're basically we're back feeding from this. Um, turn that off there. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, write this in there. Um, move this down a little bit. Go ahead and turn the power on. Hit connect. Connected. We're going to write the EEPROM. Okay. This is the. Da -da -da. The EEPROM. going to write the internal flash right there okay right now it's erasing that uh, that chip and then I'll move on to writing it basically you can watch here and it kind of gives you a breakdown of of what it's doing and when it's doing it. Now we've moved to writing. As you can see, we have that light blinking up there. It means it's got data going back and forth. If you guys have any other ECMs or modules you'd like me to do videos on, I'd be happy to uh, give you a guide and, and make a video of how to do them. Um, if any of you guys out there have anything that needs cloned or uh, any airbag modules that need the crash data cleared out, uh, body control modules or dash clusters that need the mileage changed. Um, maybe you bought a, another cluster and the mileage was way off when you plugged it in. Uh, feel free to get a hold of me and send those in. Uh, I have all my contact information listed or you can jump over to our website. It's www.johnsoncustoms712.com. Uh, and that has all our, our contact information and our mailing address. We do a lot of mail-in uh, mail module work. Um, this one, the customer sent this in. I believe he's from, uh, where was he from? He's from uh, Missouri, right, Missouri. So we pretty much try to make a, uh, an effort to get everything done the same day that we receive it. Uh, if we don't, it's usually a, at least a 24-hour turnaround on everything. And we do offer free shipping on, on all of our module orders. Uh, if you want to do faster shipping, uh, we offer express one to two day USPS. And that's an extra $40. But yeah, guys, if, if you enjoy these videos or you have something that you're working on and you can't get it, feel free to, to reach out to me and, and ask me to do a video on it. Um, I'd be happy to. It's all about spreading the knowledge 
it seems that it's it's really hard to find this knowledge out there everyone that can do it doesn't want to give up any of the the tricks or the the knowledge that they have and uh that's what i'm i'm trying to do with this channel i'm trying to build this channel up and and let everybody know how to, that they can do this stuff you know if you get the right tools i know there's no no college course there is some courses out there but there are few and far between uh, you pretty much have to just learn this stuff as you go written successfully uh, one other thing I wanted to show you guys you can actually go in and click this hex editor and you can go through and, and you can see the the hex file here and scroll through there I'm sure if you look hard enough you would find the, the VIN number in this somewhere there you can go back you can uh, Oh, disconnect. You can also open the, the EEPROM and do the same thing. Hit the, the hex editor and and go through that. If, you, uh, if you're super talented and, and you know what you're doing, uh, you can actually go in and, and edit that EEPROM. You don't even need to, uh, to clone the original over. You could just take the, the replacement, read the EEPROM, and then make the edits that need to be made uh, with the hex editor there and write it back and it would be good to go um, but a lot of uh, knowledge goes into that I'm not uh, not one of the guys that knows how to do do that yet um, if you do know how to do that feel free to reach out and uh, give me some advice though I'd love to uh, love to learn new things so and if you ever see anything in, in my videos that uh, you think isn't quite right or I'm, I'm doing it the hard way, feel free to drop a comment and let me know. Um, I always would, uh, would appreciate any criticism. Um, I'm not going to get all bitter about it like most people do. Um, uh, I'm here to learn just like you guys are. So with that said, you guys have a, have a good weekend.